Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I want to talk about safe places for your money. And uh, you know, in this crazy market, that's what sort of people are looking for. Uh, also too, if you're new here, my name is Chris and this is to help you navigate and grow. So let's take a look at this. Um, this is interest rates and actually they're going up all around the world. And so it's not just in the USA, you can see here, um, this is actually uh, 55 different banks from around the world. And uh, this light blue lines are over um, essentially a percent interest raise. And then the dark blue lines is, uh, uh, 50 to 100. So, um, or not 50 interest rate, but they, they say basis points, but it's basically half a percent to upwards to a percent. So, um, in terms of like uh, big raises in the last month, um, you can see there were a few that did quite a lot. Um, we're uh, looking at maybe from probably 75 basis points to um, 100 basis points. So, it's basically three quarters of a percent or one percent. And in a month, that's actually really a lot. Um, and the reason why I, I'm bringing up this topic is one is I don't want you to think that the USA is the only country in the world raising interest rates. In fact, several countries are around the world, as you can see from this chart here. Um, the other thing too, which, which I think is interesting is uh, whether or not certificates of deposits are gonna be good. Now, for those of you who are, are younger viewers, um, you probably never even heard of these things because to be frank, uh, they haven't been really that good the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years. We'll look at an exact chart for, for example, but it's kind of interesting because you know now we're, we're getting to the point where um, you know just take a look at these things. Uh, I think now they're not so great, um, but in terms of like, would you rather have two percent return in six months or lose money? I would take that two percent. <laughs> um, and you can see here, like one year is a two and a half percent. So they're they're still not like super attractive, um, but I just wanted to take a look at them with you just just to take a an idea of choices where to put your money because you want to mix your money in and around in different things. Um, you can see here, it's kind of interesting. So this is um, a five-year one at 1%, one year at 0.75, and then uh, like six months at 0.51, something like that. Um, these rates, essentially certificate deposits, are you're locking up your money for a long period of time for guaranteed return. Generally speaking, with any kind of investing, you're looking at a couple of different factors. One is how much risk do you want to take, right? And how much liquidity do you want? Risk is meaning that it could swing up and down wildly, um, could go to you know zero essentially. And then uh, liquidity is like how easy it is to get in and out of a position. Um, CDs, you're basically locking your money in from like, you go back to here, it's like what, six month, one year, two year, three year, five year. And you know, generally speaking, five years for 3% isn't really great. Um, however, when you're dealing with large amounts of money and also too, when you're dealing with a, match, uh, a you know, portfolio, you wanna put your stuff in different things. Now, interestingly enough, for those of you who don't remember, CDs actually used to be okay. Um, the reason why I say that, if you take a look back here, this is like 1984, <laughs> it's funny. Um, they had five-year ones for 11%, and then they had like six-month ones for 10%. So, you know, if you could tell someone, hey, I will guarantee that you will get 10% return in six months, like I guaranteed, it's not a terrible bet. Now, obviously, it depends on what inflation is at that moment, but I'm just saying, um, with interest rates going up, CDs do become more attractive. Is now the time to get them necessarily? I, I'm thinking no, um, but... I am keeping an eye on interest rates because um, one thing I've noticed as well is not only is a certificate of deposit rates going up, savings accounts are going up. In fact, um, SoFi, which is, we have a link on the on the channel description if you wanna get into SoFi. Um, their savings is at 1.25, but to be fair, and I guess I should uh, figure out a way to get a link to this one, <laughs> um, is 1.4% over at E-Trade. So if anyone has an E-Trade savings account, I'd, I'd like to hear if indeed uh, it is 1.4% because this, this is real. Um, now, the advantage of just holding cash in a savings account is it's highly liquid, right? You can pull it in and out pretty much whenever you want. Although I do think most of these type of accounts, they, they only want you to really withdraw like six times a month is usually something like that before you have to pay some kind of fee. So that's essentially the CDs is, is you lock it up and you're not, you're not taking the money out. Um, and then these, uh, you know, if you wanna have full liquidity, you either get like a checking or savings. I think you guys know how this stuff works, but just worth reiterating, um, because why am I bringing all this stuff up is when interest rates go up, one of the reasons why the stock market goes down is because alternatives look more attractive, right? So, because the idea is like, well, do I want to take a risk in the stock market or do I want guaranteed money? And everyone has to make a decision on what kind of um, sort of risk you want to take. And this is this is sort of why I've been telling people you want to be in I bonds if you can get some. Um, it doesn't mean you throw all your money in. In fact, most of us can't, um, mostly because there's a limit on these things. It's only ten thousand dollars a year, right? So there's a limit. However. Uh, it's guaranteed 9.62%, and right now it is the best savings account in, in the country, for, for real. I mean, you just, you know, I just showed you guys CD rates, it was like a couple percent, two and a half. Um, regular savings accounts is like about one, 1 1.2, 
and then you're getting like 9.62 on these things. Now, these things are not as liquid as the other, the other accounts. So basically, um, you just put your money in this thing and you just keep it there and just treat it like a savings account. So if you don't need the money right away, um, and it's better than sitting in cash, so you're collecting something that's it's definitely worth considering. Um, and you can buy, um, you know, one for your family members if you like. It used to be when I was a kid that old people would buy these things for their grandchildren. Um, the main reason was because the, the gen so that would be two generations above me, essentially, right? The um, grandparent generation above me, uh, they lived through the World War II and, and sort of buy bonds was, was a cultural thing. So these days, people don't talk about bonds when they should, because um, especially these Sears I bonds, they said, are, are, are a thing. Now, some people are like, okay, Chris, I, I want to take a little bit more risk. Um, you know, I want to play the market. You, you've seen how that's turned out. So that's why I've been you know, telling you guys since last year, you want to be in safe stuff. Um, could you go back into growth stocks? You totally could. Uh, I want to show you an example of a couple um, choices of stocks that I think is always a fun one. Uh, we've talked about these on the channel. I always talk about these kind of ones. Uh, phone companies are always fun um, because you, know, you want to be in companies. If you are going to take uh, risk in the stock market, you want to be in companies that aren't going to go to zero, that you're not really worried about their business. People aren't going to cancel their phone lines. Now, with stocks though, right? Because because I first mentioned you know CDs, savings, or even bonds. The basic idea is that they're low risk or no risk even, um, and you're you're going to get some sort of return. Whereas stocks, the reason why um, they go they go up and down is is they're, they're a little bit more volatile because quarter to quarter people are rating stocks on based on uh, how much a company earns. That's basically what it is, and that can change and fluctuate depending on market conditions. Now, Verizon year to date has actually been okay. Um, you know, it's down 2.71%, but I'm telling you, it's way better than being down like 30, 40% or, or even more with some, as you know, some stocks have been doing in this market. And that's sort of like why I've been telling you guys, you know, not everyone is losing all their money in the market. You know, um, I've, I've had some Verizon stock. It doesn't mean that like, oh my God, you know, I, I'm so rich because I got Verizon, but I haven't lost all my money. And I just really want to emphasize with, with that with you guys that these kind of things ex exist. Now, the reason why Verizon is an interesting one is it because it pays 5% yield, right? And so the question you'd ask yourself is, would I have a Verizon stock at 5% yield or you know, would I rather have a savings, savings account or you know, would I rather try like a, a, a CD? Actually, here's the rates of CDs, like at 2%. And, and, this, and these are sort of, just so I want you to get your mind thinking about managing your money, right? Because one of the, the most important lessons, um, this is, comes from Warren Buffett, I like Warren Buffett, but it's basically just don't lose. And you know, uh, staying flat or getting that 2% or in case of Verizon, trying for a 5% dividend where the do acknowledge that the stock could go down in price, um, but you're not really gonna lose with those kind of things. Now, the, the reason why Verizon is kind of a, how can I say, a slow grower or safe player not gonna like triple anytime soon is when you do look at something like a Verizon, you want to look at the payout ratio. So the payout ratio of Verizon is 46.83%. What that means, if you guys are new to these kind of stocks, um, companies that are very mature, they pay a dividend. So whenever they get profits, they essentially share it with you, the shareholder, or your part owner of the company. And in fact, they share essentially 46% of the profits with people who own the stock. So instead of using that money to grow the company more, they just pay you some of the money that, that they made. So, so it's a different way of thinking about stocks than, than what I know is popular on YouTube. However, I'll say however, um, it is true that you can outperform uh, you know, these kind of stocks by taking a little bit more risk, but the downside of say, choosing something instead of a Verizon or choosing something instead of a you know, CD account or savings account is that you can lose money. That's, that's the downside. And, and there's, a lot, there's highly, high, high risk. Uh, with some companies. So one of the things I, I've been telling you guys is you don't want to take too big a risk right now in this market. And here's an example of it was a risk. It 100% was a risk, but I wouldn't necessarily say it was like a huge risk, like a penny stock or anything like that. Um, this was T-Mobile and it's, it's kind of one that um, people don't really talk about that much. It, it just shows you that, and I'm just keeping it real with you guys, um, many people on YouTube don't talk about the right stuff. <laughs> um, you know, people want to hear about Shiba Inus and hear about your Dogecoins and hear about your DraftKings and your Palantirs and stuff like that. Um, but I just want to open your eyes that there are other stocks in the market um, some that have been doing really well, actually. And you can see this year to date, um, T-Mobile has been fine. It's up 20%, which is totally fine. Um, yes, in the last past year, it's down 5%, right? Not spectacular barn burner, but you're not losing all of your money. And kind of the lesson I want you to get just from today, and I, and I like doing these every now and then, is to just think about there are lots of different options to you know put your money. And one of the reasons why the market is 
behaving the way that it is when interest rates go up, so that's what's going on. Um, sometimes these other sort of assets that we never talk about, um, be it your CDs, be it your savings, or be it your bonds, become more attractive, right? And, and you gotta ask yourself, okay, do I wanna take a risk in a market that's just going kind of crazy, it's hard to know what's going on, or do I wanna put my money in something where I literally get paid right now? And um, that's one of the reasons why dividend stocks are good after sort of these crazy, crazy you know, market bull runs is because um, the highly volatile markets start crashing like crazy. I, I was talking to you guys about this. And what happens at the end of the day, the profitable companies, their stock will always have value because they make money. And if you can take ownership in a company that, that makes money and at a reasonable valuation, meaning at a reasonable price, we're valuing the company at a reasonable price, um, you can do well in this market. So I, I, I don't expect crazy returns this year. Um, I, I, you know, I'm pretty bearish on the market as a whole, but I just want you to know that um, there are places to put your money. Uh, I don't think CDs are that attractive quite yet, but if interest rates can be going up, you know, if, if we ever see like 5% guaranteed in six months, some people will take that bet, it's, it's, you know, and it's fine. And this is the one thing I want to emphasize, because I know sometimes people don't want to do anything safe at all, they want to do higher the risky stuff, is that in your portfolio, you should have a mix of different things. And that doesn't mean all the same company in the same industry, it means literally different things, right? Bonds, you have a savings account, you might just have cash, well, cash is a savings account. Actually, and that's the one thing too, whatever your cash situation is, you should always be putting in some sort of interest bearing account. So you're getting some money, getting your money working for you every day, right? Um, and the, what, the reason why I like dividend stocks is because people sometimes look at savings account and they'll treat like a Verizon stock in that same vein. Now, do be aware though, Verizon, if you look at the headlines, like it says, hey, you know, we, we maybe our earnings are going to decline and that's the risk of stocks again. So um, just wanted to share this and, and have a general chat with you about these kind of things. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, and the question I pose to you is, do you know about CDs? Have you ever bought a CD? And um, what do you think about those things going forward? So thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next video.